One of the things I've been looking forward to most in this project has been making turpentine as a varnish solvent out of pine sap. And it's turned out to be a lot trickier than I thought it would be. Here's the story. I spent a few weeks going around collecting sap that had been exuded by pine trees. The trees produce the sap when they get injured, pretty much the same way that we do when we bleed. To make turpentine, I want the runniest, stickiest sap that I can find, because that has the highest content of the terpene compounds that I'm looking for. I'm also collecting the hardened sap, because I can use that for the resin content of the varnish. Smells great. I tried a series of still designs from the primitive, from the wild and woolly days, through the industrial era, more conventional stills where I did most of the work and probably learned the most, to the space age, the flying saucer, which is probably the most efficient and uh, effective still design for small batches. I heard about this in violin school, the sort of folklore, and, and I've always wanted to test it. So I heard that in the old days, when they would make varnish, they'd, they'd melt the resin down like this, and then to capture the turpentine, you just put some sheep's fleece on the top. So what I've done is I've made a little screen that will go inside here, into the top, and uh, that's to stop the fleece going too far in. And I'm just going to balance the fleece on the top there. And the fumes are supposed to condense on the fleece and then you wring it out. And uh, I don't know, I've been on the internet I have seen no documentation of this whatsoever, so um, I'm curious to know what's going to happen. The sheep's fleece turpentine still has been cooking away for about four or five hours, so let's see what we've got in here. Little wisps of smoke coming up. Oh, we've got some stuff here. A little bit of condensation in there. I can't say it's absolutely sodden, but there's some, uh, you know, it's, it's mostly dry, but there's some residue there. Let's see what it is. Oh lord. <laughs> I think I basically collected some tar here. That's not really terps. And the thing is not wringing wet. It's most, it's mostly dry. Okay, so today is testing day for the varnish and turpentine making. I think I've got enough to start with. So, <coughs> I'll give it a moderate heat. Okay, so we got got quite a nice boil going here so I'm going to put the lid on and uh, start collecting. Now I wonder if it's, it's smoking so well through there I wonder if it's even going to condense. I think I'm going to have to do something to cool that down. Yeah look at that all my turpentine is just <laughs> floating off into the atmosphere. Hmm that ain't going to work. All right, I'm gonna go get a wet towel. With a wet towel on, cooling the pipe, I started to get a very slow flow of turps and water. But I also noticed that I was losing a lot of vapor around the pot lid. About a week later, I ran it again with the lid taped on and I was very surprised when my distillate came out bright green. Uh, apparently the water in the pipe had been reacting with the copper 
So I tried another design with a smaller chamber, a lid that I could tape on for an airtight seal, worked quite well. Then I had a plastic exit tube, which was non-reactive. I ran that through a water bath, uh, just like a regular hillbilly still. And out of the end, I got absolutely nothing. Welcome back to Santa Rosa Still Works, where I'm still making stills that don't work. And uh, today I've got like iteration number six, maybe, of my uh, turpentine still. Uh, yesterday's fail um, had a plastic tube coming out of the top. And I think what was happening was the uh, vapors were condensing when they hit that tube because the tube was cold and they were just dripping back down into the pan again and recycling. Um, so I've gone back to copper and um, this copper will get very hot and um, so the vapor can, can travel on through. So I'm about to test it with a, um, another can full of uh, commercial rosin. I've I'm stopping experimenting on my pine sap because um, I'm running a bit low so I just want to make sure the system works. So I was about to put the top on this thing um, and I noticed that uh, it has this label on there, which has some local significance. Um, Hunt Brothers were founded in Santa Rosa uh, in the 1890s, and not only within Santa Rosa, but within three blocks of my house right here. So this is uh, a very uh, timely find. Anyway, I'm about to... Um, melt this down and then I'm going to seal the top on with um, just lightly with some tape and uh, see what we get. Well what I got was almost nothing. Nada. That's looking like another fail. I could hear the resin simmering away inside but the top was still cold so I added an aluminum foil hood to catch some of the heat from the burner and then I boosted that with a heat gun. This all seems very elaborate and inefficient, but at last I was getting some distillate. I made the turrets of the project using this still, but afterwards I came up with a better design that I'd like to show you. This is my most effective and efficient still design. A tin can, the pine sap goes in the bottom. A little collecting jar, paper, blue tape is a surprisingly effective gasket. The condenser is this pan lid, it's domed. Um, the fumes hit the top, condense and drip down the screw. Um, it's very nice to be able to see what's going on inside. A refinement would be to use a smaller lid because um, this lid is getting heated up by the stove and um, to effectively condense it needs to be cold. To the same end, we could also use a taller tin can, might also help. During distillation, you get different products at different times in the process. In the first few minutes, the most volatile gases come off and give you what I'm calling turpentine. It doesn't actually smell like any turpentine that I've ever come across, but it does seem to have the same solvent properties. Along with the turpentine, you also get water. And in this case, the water has been colored green by the copper. And what I'm doing here is sucking off the turps, which is floating on top of the water. It's actually kind of handy having that water being green because it makes it easier to see. After the first few minutes, your turps has all evaporated and then as the temperature rises, you start to get an oily substance that I'm calling pine oil. And uh, that oil keeps on coming off for several hours and you'll end up with about two to three times as much oil as turps, depending on how fresh and uh, sticky and squidgy your pine sap was to start with. And finally, I did a volatility slash oiliness test. Just put a little dab of each liquid onto a piece of paper. And 14 minutes later, the turps is all but gone. There's my yield, 
just under half an ounce of maybe turpentine and about twice as much some kind of pine oil which I don't know what to do with that um, if I'm very careful that might be just enough to make the varnish that I need but no washing brushes in between coats <laughs> 